Let's go on to The Guardian then, and uh, a story that's uh, actually on many of the front mm. pages, but it was embargoed until midnight, so we couldn't tell anyone about it, but... Everyone's back <laughs> in the embargo. <laughs> well, David Cameron broke the embargo, actually. Um, Codebreaker Turing is given posthumous royal pardon, Clark. Um, this a reflection, really, of what was a pretty terrible legal situation as far as homosexuality was concerned back when he was alive, but also also a reflection of his huge role in contributing to the to uh, winning the second world war yeah th this is uh, it's a magnificent gesture you know for a gentleman who, who was pivotal in, in turning about the fortunes of, of which way the the world war would would come out but we share actually different differing views on this because although this is something that we do see that is fully justified because of uh, of how ridiculous you know the laws were on, on homosexuality that's down to our perception in our modern understanding you know and how how we view life and how we view equality i, I think that if we're going to start to look over all of the incidents that have happened historically and start to um you know change the outcome and posthumously change Mm. decisions that were made throughout throughout history then the queen's going to be incredibly busy <laughs> doling out pardon after pardon and rightly so we've got a lot to atone for i mean look i have to say i've had about an hour to think about this story and i'm probably going to go a bit off script here because i think what i'm supposed to do is go this is a great feel-good story uh we're finally laying to rest and injustice let's all move on i don't buy it actually this is a man firstly if we just look at him himself his contribution in world war ii uh, who what helped shorten the war by up to two years possibly saving the lives of millions mm. of people mm. what happened to him he was persecuted by the state driven he was he was chemically castrated sure. and then driven to suicide he doesn't deserve a pardon he deserves a royal groveling mm. uh, for what that government and what the laws of the day did to him and it doesn't matter actually whether he is the hero that he is and he is a hero it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if he's an unknown gay man airbrushed out of history people who we don't even know their names mm. whose lives were mercilessly ruined and destroyed because they were persecuted just because of the sorts of just because of the people they happened to fall in love with that is a grave and disgraceful blot on the history of this country and a pardon is not enough what we need now is the overturning of all of these convictions mm. of people whose lives were trashed as a mark of the fact that we have become, we have people, LGBT people, struggled against these laws at great sacrifice to themselves. People are often spat out in the streets, sent to prison and all the rest of it. They fought against these laws. And the least we can do to those people is to show as a country we've moved on, we've put a huge mark under that injustice and we are purging it by saying that those laws were wrong, unjust and disgusting. And that is what we should do. We should overturn all of them. It's interesting, isn't it, Clark? Because uh, Peter Tatchell, uh, the gay rights campaigner, says that, you know, there should be other pardons for other people who were treated shabbily as a result of the, the, the ban on homosexuality um, during that time. Um, would a blanket um, uh, pardon for all these people be fitting, do you think? Well, it would be fitting, yeah. And just like Owen said, you know, it's um, it highlights how far we've come in that time. But then surely that downplays the individuality of each person you know it kind of dehumanizes the individual so if you're going to open this box which which they have now done then this is going to be the beginning of an incredibly long road uh, it's part of reconciliation though i think i think we need mm. to have truth i mean that's what they called in south africa mm. truth mm. and reconciliation and in the same way you know they didn't look back at the apartheid laws and go well you know things were different back then they accepted that those laws were unjust, they were wrong, and they had to have truth and reconciliation. And I think we need that same process when we look at our own injustices, mm. which was the literally the destruction of people's lives. These people's lives were ruined. And people's lives now are still ruined because of the, the hangover of that period, when it was acceptable to see LGBT people as inferior human beings who deserve to be sent to prison. We still suffer from that legacy. And I think part of coming to terms with it, we're finally coming to terms and becoming a nation where, you know, we treat each other, uh, whether we're straight or gay or bisexual or transgender equally. We've still got a way to go, a long way to go. But part of that, we need to come to terms with that past. And reconciliation means overturning all of these unjust convictions. All right. Okay.